How does one realistically become a millionaire? It's pretty easy. Um, you just have to make a million bucks a year and boom, you're done. No, totally joking. Um, you actually have to make about 1.7 million in order to account for all the tax. Joking aside, to actually become a millionaire, there is a realistic way. So in this video, we're going to talk about kind of the realistic way for someone in the USA with an average salary to become a millionaire over their lifetime. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics in the fourth quarter of 2019, the estimated yearly income for an individual is around $48,672, so we're going to use that in this example. But of course, when we're talking about salary, we're talking about gross salary. So after taxes, when you account for federal income, as well as state income tax, and then FICA and other, other taxes here. Um, it really comes out to $37,846 a year. Now, of course, when we look at that income, we can't be saving or investing all of that because we have expenses. So if you've never heard of the 50-30-20 rule, what that is is it's a generic budgeting rule saying 50% of your income should be going to necessities, groceries, rent, utilities, things like that. 30% is going to discretionary uh, spending, so entertainment, things that you want to be spending on, going out to uh, grab that $5 coffee, and then 20% will be your savings or the amount of money that you're investing. So just for fun, let's say that you did apply the 20% rule and you took that income, you would have about $7,569 a year in order to save. Now, if you didn't do any investing and you just had the cash, it would take you, take you about 132 years in order to get to a million bucks. Yeah, I know, that's insane, right? In order to make up that difference and cut down on that timeline, really you have to be investing that money in order to get a higher return on your money other than 0%, uh, just sitting in a bank account getting no interest. So that is where you turn to assets like the stock market or real estate. But in this video, we're going to be talking about if you just invested your money in the stock market, we're going to jump into what the average returns have been for the stock market over the years to see kind of how we can project to get to that $1 million faster than 132 years. So if we take a look at the average return for the stock market over the years, you can see it's around 9%. So we're going to use that in our estimate to calculate how long it would take in order to get to a million bucks. So I have this Excel calculator that I built and we have the assumptions of 7,569 in yearly contributions at a 9% return. And you can see in order to get over a million bucks, it takes about 30 years. Another interesting point um, to bring up is the fact if you look at the cumulative contributions, um, at a certain point, the compounded returns actually outpace the contributions. So you can see in year 30, um, you know, in year 29, you had $720,000 of the 939 coming from your investment returns, and then 804 the next year. So it jumped up $80,000 compared to your 7,569 contribution. And this concept that we just talked about is known as compound interest. And what's cool about that is Albert Einstein himself actually quoted compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it earns it. He who doesn't pays it. And now I know you're probably thinking, what, what about inflation? What about uh, the fact that a million dollars today isn't worth the same thing a million dollars in 29 years? So let's factor that in to the calculation. So if we look at this U.S. inflation calculator, you can see in the past 12 months, the inflation is around 2.3%. And from 2000 to 2020, um, we've seen about uh, anywhere from, you know, 3% all the way to uh, close to zero or a little negative. So as an average, uh, usually around 2% of inflation, I would say, is probably a good number to use. Now we're cooking. Now we have a 2% inflation rate. So that brings your total yearly return to 7%. And now it takes around 35 years to retire. But hold on. This estimate also assumes you are the worst employee ever because this does not have any raises built into that income or what you're saving. So let's go ahead and check the numbers again if you're getting a raise on an annual basis. Look at you get those hypothetical raises. Nicely done. So 
at an average rate around 3%, um, which is around the past five years, it's been around 3% in terms of yearly raises. So we're going to use that as the conservative number. You can see it brings down your years to 31 instead of 35. So this is a pretty good picture of, you know, factoring inflation, factoring in slight raises. This could be even better if you jump around jobs. Um, but with a rough number of averages, average salary, average inflation, average yearly returns, average uh, raises. So it takes about 31 years to get there. So there's a couple other takeaways from this video that I want you to get out of this. So one is compounding is massive. So the earlier you start investing, the better you are. Even if you're in college and you have some money from you know a job that you can throw into a Roth IRA or any brokerage account, um, basically you have the benefits of that compounding at a younger age. So actually you don't have to contribute as much in order to reach those goals. The longer you wait, the longer you delay, basically it will take you longer to get to that retirement amount that you're looking for. So starting earlier is definitely the better scenario. And then secondly, it's all about consistency. So in that model that we're talking about, we had a contribution every single year, right? So through the ebbs and flows of the market, the market's not gonna go up 9% every year. One year will go 30% up, um, the next year it may go down 10, then down 20, but over the long term, the average will be 9%. So that's something to consider is the dollar cost averaging, making sure that you are consistently investing that way. You're buying when the market is going down in a year, and then you're also buying when the market is going up. Consistently buying, you get a average price, and over the long term, you will get that 9%. Well, actually, the rate isn't guaranteed. That's just based on the growth estimate of corporations' earnings growth, as well as dividends that you'd be collecting from those corporations as well. Another thing is what investment vehicles should you be using in order to get those market returns? So if you've ever heard of indexes like the Dow Jones, the S&P 500, NASDAQ 100, basically those are indexes that are benchmarking the performance of all the companies that are bundled up in those indexes. So when I'm buying the S&P 500 through an index ETF, I'm getting exposure to around 500 companies that will you know have different performances but i will get the same performance as that blend between those companies so when you invest in index etf you get the diversification and you should match the performance of the overall market so that's what we're talking about and some of those vehicles can be you know spy voo there's a lot of vanguard etfs that have low expense ratios so those are the kinds of investments that you should be looking at in order to match the stock market returns. How do you beat the market? You guessed it, penny stocks. No, don't do that. They are extremely risky. And one of the mistakes people make is thinking that they can beat the market tremendously by going after risky assets. If you want to play it safe, and this is the realistic view of becoming a millionaire, you want to invest in something that gets you the returns of the market something that's diversified and something that's safe. Now you have an idea of what it takes to become a realistic millionaire. You can of course increase the speed of the timeline by increasing the income through promotions or side hustles. And then you can also increase your savings rate. So hopefully you guys learned something in this video. And if you enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe for more. Thanks guys, have a great day.